The easiest way to integrate payments in your app is using Stripe. What makes it even easier is when you introduce Expo. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can integrate Stripe payments into your Expo application. As always, let's start with an empty React Native project created with Expo. We're going to name our project Expo Stripe, and in my case, I'm going to call it YouTube. We're going to choose a blank managed workflow without TypeScript. Let's cd into our project folder and let's go ahead and install our dependencies. The first thing that we're going to need is Stripe. So we're going to say Expo install and we need Stripe forward slash Stripe dash React Native. Next, to handle our API calls, we're going to have to set up a server. I'm going to open up our project folder and I'm going to create a new folder and call that server. Let's cd into our server folder and let's init a package.json by calling npm init y. We'll first go ahead and install Stripe on our server by saying npm install Stripe. And we'll use Express as our backend. So we'll say npm install Express. And we'll also install in Nodemon in order to monitor our server and rebuild it. Now within our server folder, let's create a new file and let's call that index.js. Here we'll import in Express. And then we'll create an Express app. Then we'll just listen to our server by using app.listen and we'll just console.log the address of the server. Let's save that out. Let's open up our terminal. Within our server folder, let's type in nodemon index.js. We get an error which tells us that we can't use import. Let's head into our package.json within our server folder. And within this, let's pass in another property called type and set that to module. Let's save that out. And our server should be working. Now let's just close out our terminal close out our package.json and before we can set up Stripe, we need to actually have a Stripe account and have access to our Stripe API keys. So head over to stripe.com and create a free account and then head over to the dashboard. Within the dashboard, we have this developers tab where we can get access to all our API keys. Here you need access to the publishable key and the secret key. Once you have both those keys, come back to your app and it'll be nice if you can store it in a .env file but for this tutorial purpose, we're just going to use it directly. So here I'm going to create a constant called publishable key and store the publishable key in that. And similarly, I'll create a constant called secret key and store our secret key in that. Let's save that out. Now within our project folder, I'm going to create a new folder called that src for source. And in that, I'm going to create a new file and call that stripe app.js. Here, I'm just going to pull in some boilerplate to create a functional component and call that Stripe app. Let's save that. Now within our app.js, let's go ahead and import in our Stripe app. So we'll say import Stripe app from our source folder, Stripe app. Here I'm gonna get rid of the boilerplate and pass in our Stripe app. Let's save that. Let's open up our terminal. And within our project folder, I'm gonna call expo start to start our expo server. Once it's started, I'm gonna press I to open up my iOS simulator. As we can see, our Stripe app is working. The reason we created a Stripe app separately is because we need to wrap this in a Stripe provider. So let's go ahead and import in our Stripe provider from the Stripe library. Here I'm gonna wrap our Stripe app within a Stripe provider. And the Stripe provider takes one prop, which is known as the publishable key. Since we've already pasted in our keys here, I'm gonna copy it out from my index.js and paste it in here. Now our app has access to Stripe. Let's jump into our Stripe app and go ahead and set up a text field to accept the user's email address and then the card field to take the card details. So I'm going to get rid of the text, import in a text input here and say text input and just give our text input some properties. The first thing is going to be auto capitalize. I'm going to set that to none. Then I'm going to set a placeholder which says email, pass in a keyboard type to set it as email address. I'm going to pass in an on change within which we can set our email to our state. And lastly, we're going to pass in some styles. Let's first go ahead and set up our state. So I'm going to say const email set email and set that equal to use state. And next, let's go ahead and set up our styles for our input. So I'm going to come down here below our container. We'll create an input style and I'll just paste in some default styles here. And here by default, from my snippet, I had an align item centered passed to my container. I'm just gonna get rid of that. And instead, I'm just gonna pass in a margin of 20. So now we can access the user's email. We need to now access the user's card details. 
For that, Stripe already has a built-in card field component. So come here on top and I'm going to go ahead and import in our card field component. So here I'll say import card field from Stripe forward slash Stripe React Native. Now below our text input, let's go ahead and pass in our card field component. So here we'll say card field. Within the card field, we'll pass in a postal code enabled to true so that the user's postal code can be accepted. We'll pass in a placeholder to show what kind of a number needs to be passed in. Then we'll pass in a card style. We'll also pass in a style for the card container. And lastly, we'll have an onChange property from which we'll access the card details and store it in our local state. Now let's go ahead and set up our styles and our local state for the card. So I'm going to come down here below input, pass in card. Here we'll give it a background color of the same color as our text input. And similarly, we'll set up the card container within which we'll pass in a height of 50 and a margin vertical of 30 to space it out from the text field. Let's save that out. And there we see we get our card container. Now let's go ahead and set up our on card chain state. So I'm going to say const card details, set card details, and set that equal to use state. Here we're also going to pull in something which is going to help us confirm the card payment that's available to us from a hook called use confirm payment from Stripe React Native. To set that up, we'll say const, we'll set up an object within which we'll access confirm payment. We'll access the loading property and we'll set that equal to use confirm payment. These two values are directly available to us from the use confirm payment hook. Lastly, we need a pay button here in order to actually make the payment. So come down here below our card field. Here we're going to pass in a button which has an on press which points to this function we're going to create. It also has a title of pay. And lastly, we disable the button depending on whether the payment is being confirmed or not using the loading flag. So let's go ahead and set up the handle pay press method. Here on top, we'll say const handle pay press. Make that an asynchronous method. Within this method, we're going to be doing three things. First, we'll gather the customer's billing information. Then we'll fetch the intent client secret from our backend, and then we'll confirm the payment with the card details. So let's first check if card details and email is entered by the user. So we'll say if card details are not complete, or if the email is not entered, then we'll pass in an alert, which tells us please enter complete card details and email and exits out. Card details is actually an object of the data provided from the card field. And that's why once the data is complete, it will have this complete parameter. Once we're sure that we have the card details, we'll set up our billing details. We'll just say const billing details. Billing details is an object within which we can pass in our email that we accepted. Next, let's go ahead and get the client secret. For that, we're going to set up a method here. So we'll say const set the method called fetch payment intent client secret. It is going to be asynchronous. And within this method, we're going to use the fetch API to fetch our client secret from our server. So within fetch, we're going to pass in our API URL, which we'll just set up. The endpoint we're going to hit is going to be called create payment intent. We want that method to be a post and we just need to pass in some headers to indicate the content type to be JSON. And let's close out this method. Let's go ahead and set up our API URL. I'm just going to set it up in this file here. So we'll say const API URL and let's set that to our local host URL. Before we actually do anything with this method, we have to go ahead and set up this create payment intent route in our express app. So we'll set up a new route here by saying app.post, pass in our create payment intent route. It is going to be asynchronous and it'll return the request and the response objects. Within our route, let's set up a try and catch block and we'll set up a payment intent variable, which we'll extract out by calling stripe.paymentintents.create, which is a method available to us from the Stripe library we installed on our server. Within this, we'll pass in a configuration. We have to set up the amount, which by default will set to 1099. You have to note that the value used here is the lowest denomination of the particular currency you're mentioning. The currency in our case is going to be USD. So here 1099 is in cents. So that means it's $10.99. For the payment method type, we'll set it to as card. By mentioning the payment method type, we're telling the server that only accept payments by card. This is also the default option. So if you want, you can leave this configuration out. Once we have the payment intent, let's save that in a constant called client secret by calling payment intent dot client secret. We can then go ahead and return the JSON to our client by saying rest.json. Within this, we'll pass in a client secret property and set that equal to the client secret we got back. Just in case we catch any errors, we're going to log out the error message 
and also send back an error object, which we can use on our client side to display a message. Let's now go ahead and set up the Stripe library. So here on top, we'll first import Stripe from Stripe. Let's then instantiate the Stripe class by saying const Stripe is equal to, we'll set up Stripe by passing in our secret key as the first parameter. As the second parameter, it's gonna be a set of options. One option you should always specify is the API version. And in our case, it's 2020-08. Dash two seven. The reason this is important is because once the API updates, it's possible that the data that you're getting back from the API might change or the format of the data might change. You can confirm the API version by going to the developers tab in your dashboard and here you should see your API version. Now back in our Stripe app, within our fetch payment intent client secret, we're gonna come here and extract out the client secret and error from our response that we received from our fetch API. Once we have the client secret and error, we're going to return both of them so that we can access them in our handle pay press method. Now that we have the client secret, let's go ahead to our handle pay press method and actually fetch the client secret and confirm the payment. See here, below our billing details, I'm going to set up a try and catch block. Within the try catch, I'm going to extract out the client secret and error from our fetch payment intent client secret method. Once we have the client secret, we can confirm the payment, but first we'll check for any errors and if there's an error, we'll just log it out in our console. If there's no error, then we'll extract out the payment intent and error from the confirm payment method that we got from our use confirm payment hook. Within the confirm payment method, we have to pass in the client secret that we got, and we also have to pass in certain options. We'll specify the type to be card because that's the payment type we want to use. And along with that, we'll specify the billing details, which in our case is going to be this billing details object. We'll check if there's any error, and in that case, we'll just alert payment confirmation error and alert out the message. Else, if there is a payment intent returned, within that, we'll alert payment successful and we'll also console.log it out. Just in case we get any errors, we'll log out the error here. Now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and test out our app. I'm gonna open up the terminal. I've just closed out the server and the expo server for now. For our express server, let's start it again by saying nodemon index.js. And for our Expo app, I'm just going to say Expo Start and then run our app on our iOS simulator. Once we have our app running, the first thing we'll do is not pass in any details and press the pay button. As expected, we get the please enter complete card details and email alert. Now it's time to test this out. I'm just going to pass in user at stripe.com as the email. And for our card, since we're using test keys to confirm a successful payment, we have to use this exact card number, which is 4242 all the way. So I'm just gonna put that in. The expiry, CVV and zip code does not matter. You can pass in anything. Obviously it can't be in the past. And you can go ahead and press the pay button. As we see, we got a payment successful alert and we got all these details back from Stripe. The cool thing is in case you want the user to confirm the payment, we can try that with another card number. Let's get rid of this and instead pass in 4,000 zero zero two five double zero double zero three one five five if you click on pay now you'll notice we get this nice model that comes up with the website and it's going to ask us to confirm the 3d secure payment we can complete the authentication it says authentication is complete close it out and we get payment successful we can also test for insufficient funds by using another card number we can pass in four thousand double zero double zero double zero double zero triple nine five as you can see, we got a payment confirmation error and the error is undefined because here we missed out an M. So this should be message. Let's try that again. And there it tells us your card was declined. You can also head over to the Stripe documentation to see other test cards that are available to test out your implementation. In this video, we've barely scratched the surface on what all you can achieve with using Stripe. For more on Stripe, head over to their website and try it out.